Hi knitters, welcome to PJ Knits. My name is Penny and I am a knitter, a blogger, and a YouTube podcaster living in central Illinois. And this is my podcast all about knitting, knitting, and knitting. And I have a lot of knitting to talk to you about today. It is Monday, August 9th, and in central Illinois, it is rainy and overcast. You know, if we'd had a couple of days ago, if I had uh, my stuff together, um, I could have podcast in the sunshine, so you had a lot better light. But uh, today, we're just doing what we were doing. And uh, so, this is Illinois. Thanks, everybody, for coming back um, and for our uh, new subscribers. If you would subscribe and like this video and also comment below if there's some things that you want to talk about in the knitting world, I'd be glad to talk about those. So anyway, let's get started with the knitting. Um, top this 2021 KAL is going on all year long. Um, for those who don't know what that is, is last uh, December 26th. I decided it was time for me to start knitting my sweaters ahead of the season. Now, and I would call it top this 2021. Now the thought was to be ready for the season when it came. And I have to tell you, like many of you probably, I'm still knitting on summer because summer is, it's, we still have summer for another six weeks officially. And around here, it can be hot into the 1st of October. But I have to tell you, um, Instagram has really been pulling, sucking me into looking at my fall sweater. So um, I'm going to talk about what I think is going to be my last summer sweater for this season. And then down the road, we're going to talk about some transitional sweaters and fall sweater knitting in the next couple of episodes. But anyway, so I'm already planning some of those fall sweaters. I've started to kind of make a list from ones that I have yarn in my stash and patterns in my library because I really want to do that as well. Use the stuff that I have. But I have to tell you, Instagram and these shops and people who post, they're like, I'm like a magnet for wanting, oh, I've got to have this. So I have, I do have a couple of uh, fallish type yarns coming Um for down the road, but again, I'll share those in transitional sweaters in the next couple of episodes. So let's get back to summer sweater knitting. I wanted to show you some of the sweaters that I have um, knit in the past, just a, a, a couple, that are still good for uh, summer knitting. These um, couple of them are really super quick and you totally, totally could be doing them um, right now and and I think the some of these yarns and with me I put a longer a little three-quarter sleeve or an elbow length sleeve and a lot of my sweaters um, for summer so they're still good here in Illinois in most climates until into October so anyway um, I wanted to share just a few of those that I've knit in the past with you um, first up I'm going to share is what I'm calling ranunculus number two I knit one out of mohair and fingering weight for winter time, and I'll show that down the road as we get to winter again, probably be wearing it. But I also knit one last year out of cake wool, finger weight, a strand of finger weight, and a strand of slub. And I got both of these yarns from the knitting place. And I knit them last year, and they're both in the Captain Phil colorway. And so the pattern that I used, and I know a lot of you are familiar with this, and um, I had talked about that I might knit this a third time next year out of some yarn that I got up at my local yarn shop, the Fiber Universe. What happened is I had my basket of yarns, and I went through them as well. And I'm like, when I looked at the calendar and thought about what I was knitting, it's like, seriously, Penny, you really can't knit all those yarns today. So I pretty much box them up, put them away upstairs in the yarn room along with my intentions. And one of those yarns that I had bought at the Fiber U might be a next year ranunculus, might be a Hintrollem Stein t-shirt. I'm on the fence about that, but that's next year. But anyway, one of those yarns may be a ranunculus. And this is the pattern. And I have to tell you, you know, at first look with this pattern, I would not have picked it out, but it had not been for people on Instagram. Um, I 
I would have chosen this by seeing their pictures. And that's why I knit this one too, because of something I saw on the Knitting Place on their Instagram a year ago when we were under COVID. And so here is my ranunculus. And again, I make modifications to all of mine. I did not make this one as short because I just can't do that, guys. And I had and not as baggy because again, I don't need any more bulk. I need I need to be sculpted, I believe. That's just me. And uh, and so here this one is. So again, I made modifications to mine. It has a now a longer three L quarter elbow sleeve. At the bottom, I did, I put um, a ribbing on it. And again, it's long enough for me, for my body. So it comes down probably to um, upper hip on me. So here we are, ranunculus, and still doable in that yarn, in the yarn with the two yarns put together. And again, this is the Captain Phil colorway. So very, very doable, still a doable sweater um, in the next six weeks, seven weeks. And I think I can still be wearing this um, in the, the first of October because it is um, has a little bit of substantial to it, but not enough um, to be super hot. Um, and, I, and my intention was, when I, when I knit this last year, and still my intention for next year, is I bought a fabric from Vogue Fabrics up in Evanston, Illinois for a sundress. And I thought this it, it goes with it perfectly. So anyway, I've talked about that probably a year ago and haven't got it done, but maybe next year I'll get that done. So that is Ranunculus. Now, second up, I want to tell you about a sweater again. I knit this one last year. This is called My Boy Lollipop, Lollipop by Nancy Ritchie. And again, I made some modifications to mine because I knew that I did not want to make it that long. Um, and I also added a little bit longer sleeve to my one. Now, I will tell you, for those of you who are looking at this, I will say this. Yes, um, I really believe that when I wear this, I need to wear some sort of tank or even a sundress over it as well because it comes it comes off of the, um, really comes off the shoulder quite a bit for me, and, and which is something I don't like. But anyway, um, this is Nancy Ritchie's pattern, getting pearly with it. And um, I knit this one out of Chelsea Lux DK last year in a, I can't remember the colorway, it was like Menominee or something like that. So um, here we are with this one. And again, I made it um, to the pattern, but you can see how wide that neck is. You can see how wide that neck is. So most definitely, I would I wear something underneath it. I extended that sleeve, and here's a good look of the colorway. You know, for it being overcast today, it's still, uh, you get some good natural light. So anyway, as you can see, and I added a long rib to this one at the end. Um, she had a rib, but I did a little bit longer rib on that. So you can definitely see and again, this is something that totally I can wear into um, October and wearing a tank of some sort on it and be perfectly fine. And I love that little neckline um, treatment that she did there. And I love this yarn. This was my first experience with Chelsea Lux. And definitely I would have to wear something. And you know, I probably could wear a, a little turtleneck into winter underneath it. Last week, I was closing up a sweater rack and I did something stupid <laughs> and it hurt. I, I got it close here and for, and it snapped and it caught me there. And of course your, your inclination when you have that is to pull it. And so I pulled a little chunk of skin out of my <laughs> neck. So when I went to knitting the next day, my friend Becky <laughs> pointed it out and said, what did you do? Give yourself a a, a trach last night <laughs> and so I had to explain how stupid I was but anyway this is my boy lollipop and so this is just a fun little sweater and I love the yarn like I said super super um, fun to knit with so my boy lollipop by Nancy Ritchie and then next up uh, is friendship road and this one I did out of ultra pima cotton 
Um, this one is by Corey Eichelberger and um, out of Minnesota 52 knits that she knit some time ago. Um, I have knit two of these. I knit one in a bright turquoise and then I turned around and knit one out of this Ultra Pima teal. And again, this is still substantial. You know, this is a good sweater for uh, summer, but it's the Ultra Pima cotton is heavy enough that this is substantial that can be worn well into September around here and into October. And here it is. It has this wonderful um, traveling stitch across it. And Ultra Pima is so um, fun to work with. I love this yarn and feels good. And I probably did a little bit of a modification on it, extended my sleeves, and again, probably added some stitches underneath it. So this is Friendship Road. And I and extended the length. Not, I didn't extend the length at all on it, as you can see. I got a little fuzzy there to come through. And that extends, that, that traveling extends around to the back. And has a super cool treatment down the side as well. And I did it out of a teal and I have a lot of this teal left. So there's probably going to be some sort of summer sweater <clears throat> going on next year out of that as well. So that is Friendship Road. And then lastly, I want to tell you about a finished object, the one that I am wearing now. This is uh, Perfect Summer Tea. This is by Janice Ficker. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'll tell you, I told, I took, I made a lot of mods to this on, on mine. Um, as you can probably see, I'll give you a little bit closer look. I extended my sleeves I put a rib on the bottom of the sleeve because I took it to the uh, sort to mid almost the elbow, and then I also added uh, <clears throat> instead of doing um, I cord, they they have I cord around the neck, the arms, and the body. I did a um, I did a rib, probably a inch rib, and I also then did uh, but I kept the um, I cord around the neck. I wasn't real crazy about, I tried the rib and I didn't like the pickup and what was going on with what I had. So I did an eye cord around it. And then I totally did um, a slip stitch down the front of the body, all the way down to the, because I wanted to break that up um, quite a bit. Now, what I'll tell you is my, my inspiration for that is out of my journal that I use strictly for knitting. And I found this picture um, early spring, and this is what's my inspiration for it. And you can see this particular pattern has um, kind of a, um, and this was a, a ready to wear sweater. And so I just really kind of duplicated that. Now in my, in my shopping for um, spring, summer, I wanted this kind of fleck and I could not find anything that really fit the bill with it. So I had this Bio Bimbo in my stash from um, Fiber Universe from several years ago, and I had sufficient to knit it, so I just did it. Now, one of the things that surprised me about the Bio Bimbo um, yarn is I didn't, I guess I knew that it was going to sell, it was going to stripe, but I did not realize that it really was going to stripe like this. So I just went with it and added that, like I said, that stitch down the, uh, the center, the slip stitch every other row. Um, again, so I was surprised. But then when I went to do the sleeves, you know, I tried to, to just knit the sleeves and I added some stitches to underneath the sleeves. I, um, what happened was when I got to knitting that, instead of, as you know, with, with um, stripe, self-striping, when you're going around a couple of hundred stitches, your stripes are much skinnier. And when you go to do a smaller arm, say 15, 16 arm, they get chunkier. And so I had blocks of color like this, and it was like, I just did not like the aesthetic as how that went across the arm. So what I did is I would knit, as I picked up rather down here, picked up down here, 
I would clip the yarn and then wind off till I could get to the green so that I could keep some semblance of the smaller stripe and that it carried through as you went down the body. So that was one of the modifications that I made to the pattern um, as well as there was some shaping that I did not do because I just wanted it to come straight down and to match um, my body. So I did make this a lot of uh, modifications to, to match mine. And all of my sweaters are on my uh, Ravelry project page. On Ravelry, I'm Penny J. Um, I am PJ Knits everywhere else, but um, on my Ravelry, it's Penny J. And we have a PJ Knits Ravelry group that I talk about my sweaters as well. So again, this is Perfect Summer Tea by Janice Bicker Designs. And so um, that is my finished object. Not my last sweater for um, summer. My last sweater is called Snowbell, and this is one of those that I found through um, the Knitting Place, through their Instagram lives that they do almost every day. And it was out of a book from Santa Scarn. And I, um, last year, I talked about it and I wore it on the podcast. I did the anchor sweater out of Lena. And then this pattern came across um, from this book. And the only problem with this sweater pattern is you have to buy the yarn to get to buy the book. But I did because I loved it. And this is called Snowbell. This is my last summer sweater. I believe that I'm going to be knitting. Let's put it that way and look at that. Fairly easy patterning um, row repeats there, which I love. And I finished the repeats yesterday. I am using, again, like I said, I got the yarn from Knitting Place. Highly recommend them. It's from Sandus Garn. It's Lena. And this is in the petroleum colorway. And this is a great, it's a kind of a blue-gray and very, this is showing up pretty good to the patterning the, of it. Has a little fleck of white in there. It's gonna be perfect for into the fall, summer with blue jeans, with white, a white pant still um, around here. And so that is what I'm working on. And last night I finally did the, um, finished the patterning work. And now I am on, I have split the sleeves, and now I am on to the body. So there you go. Here's the front. And I am, this is going to be fun because now it's just round and around. Um, I'll figure out if I had to do any, if I had to change needle sizes to as we go down the hips. And what I have done is I have put on my sleeves on this newest thing. Talked about these before. These are from the Knitting Barber. These are the cords. I purchased mine from Leading Men Fiber Arts. And it looks like licorice. <laughs> and I got the bright green for me. This is for necks. And so what I have done is I have put my sleeves on these cords long enough to do that. And then I just knot it up and it's just sitting there. And we talked about the way this works. When you go to put something on your, on your um, cords, you shove that end on your needle and then just slide your stitches onto it. Now, I will say, this yarn has um, many threads loosely done. And I will say that when, there, when, when I went to put my sleeves on this last night, it was a little bit difficult because it wanted to catch in, uh, it, it didn't want to go over this as well because of the multiple strands. But I think in something that's not so cottony, it would easily go on. So I, I'm loving these things. And again, you just pop those on and slide your stitches on here and then tie a knot. Those are the from the Knitting Barber. Again, I bought mine from Leading Men Fiber Arts. I know that the Knitting Place had them for some time, and I'm sure they'll get them back in stock. I just think this is super, super cool. So anyway, you can see it's, it's tough to get off. It just does a little pop. So um, cool, cool invention. And that is going to be my, um, I think, my last summer sweater. So um, I think because I'm really anxious to do some, some fall. 
um, full knitting. So anyway, um, that's the, uh, there is a hashtag on Instagram, top, hashtag top this 2021 K-A-L. We'd love for you to post your uh, summer sweaters um, or even your transitional sweaters. Put them in the Ravelry group. Um, as well so we can and there's a also in the in the PJ Knits Ravelry group there is a bundle right now going on with some summer sweaters there'll be one for some transitional and winter sweaters and we'd love for you to join our group on Ravelry um, or hashtag us um, on Instagram so what's up next mistletoes that's another little um, thread that we have going on Ravelry in the PJ Knits group and I have um, a finished object. Now, this was a whip. These have been a whip. I've had number one done for quite some time. My knitting journal from of old tells me that I started this sock in August of 2014 and tells me now that I have finished the second one in August of 2021. And so I, what I'm doing is I am concentrating on some sock whips when I get so inclined. And so I have two now. This is from Lene Yarns, um, L-Y-N-A-I Yarns. And I had it for several, several years before I knit on it. And so now I have two finished socks on that one. So that's super cool. I'm so pleased with that. So I have socks to wear soon. And um, my next whip, um, my knitting journal, I could find this one, tells me that um, I cast this on sometime before January of 2012. Because in, in a post somewhere, I made a note that I was going to pull this whip back out in January of 2012 and start knitting on it. So I have another one. I did not have a second one done. And so I have, um, I'm knitting on my first um, sock, vanilla sock for me right now. And so I have that um, to be knitting on next. Um, and I'm going to keep on knitting on my sock knit uh, whips so that I can uh, get those all nice and finished um, before I start something new. So super excited about that. And again, we're doing mistletoes. Um, we do a little um, giveaway every quarter. And so we're still in our um, this current quarter. So when you finish the so sock, please go out to the um, Ravelry group under mistletoes and post it for us. And maybe you'll win a, a prize in, in this quarter. Okay, Summer of Shawls. That is going on as well. And that's another thread both on... Uh, Instagram, it's hashtag summer of shawls 2021, your finished objects or what you're knitting on in shawls. We'd love to talk about that um, and see what those all are. Uh, interestingly enough. Anyway, okay. Uh, I was just looking. I was missing a little something, which is fine. No biggie. Um, I'm not going to get up and go get it. I'm going to get just motor on while I have you, while I have you all. <laughs> Or while I have the time, let's put it that way. Summer of Shawls. I finished something. Um, this was part of the uh, Frivolous and Frugal knitting. Uh, they had a KAL going on. And Susan, who watches the podcast and is a lovely person, shawl knitter, designed this. Um, her, uh, She's actually um, um, Pink Shawl Girl. And this is one of her patterns, The Sweet Little Nothing. I had all intentions of casting this on and having it done um, before August, but things, other things kind of sort of interfered. Um, she also sent me some, Susan sent me some lovelies um, for my scrap blanket that I am working on, and I put one in already. Thank you, Susan, for this lovely package. I couldn't figure out what it was. And one of the yarns that she sent me for my uh, miter square blanket was one that she, bleh, one that was one that she won last year in um, our Summer of Shawls giveaway. So uh, anyway, thank you. Thank you. That was such a great surprise when I received those. And these are from Susan, who designed the pattern. Back to the pattern. Cute little, super quick, 
shawl. Um, I think it took me four, three or four days-ish to, uh, to knit. And what I did is I pulled out from my stash um, knit circus yarn. And this was in... Um, Let's see, it was in the great, their Greatest of Ease um, yarn. It was from Stash. I had a 600-yard skein of this, and this particular pattern only takes 400 yards. But I, I just, I figured, what the heck. I'll just pull it out of my stash. So here it is. Knit Circus Yarns. It is a 80% merino and 20% uh, nylon. The uh, colorway is Mermaid Lagoon, and it was 600 yards. And I just cast on. What I did is I thought, well, this is going to be a really cool yarn for a dress that I have, and then I, I will eventually work my way to the blues, and it'll be just perfect, right? Well, what I did is I cast on, and because I wasn't thinking that it was a 600-yard skein, I was thinking it was 400 because I didn't find my yarn label until after, realized that it was a 600, and so I started with the green. <laughs> but still, I am loving this, and I can still wear it with the dress that I have, and if you check my Instagram under PJ Knits from last week, you'll see it with the dress that I'm talking about. So this is a super, super cool, um, quick shawl to knit, a little shawlette for summer of shawls, and the thing I love about it is it has potential for wearing it lots of different ways. And I just love it. It's just a cool, cool pattern. You can do several things with it. And I will be wearing it a lot. So this is Sweet Little Nothing. Highly recommend the pattern. Um, the Pico bind off. It wasn't, I did it one night during the Olympics. And it was super, super fun. So this is part of my um, Summer of Shawls um, yarn um, collection. And so I still have probably 200 yards left that can go into, this is actually going to go into my um, Habitation Throw because it has the blues in it. And I'll start out here. And then we'll go into my blanket and um, possible um, advent calendar that I'm doing. So that was Greatest of Ease from Knit Circus. Okay, next up, I uh, just is going to share my um, ongoing whip with you also for the Summer of Shawls. And this is the half and half. I've talked about this before. Y'all have seen this um, half and half triangle from Pearl Soho, a free pattern. And doing a, a knit along with Caddy Jacks. Hope and hope to have this done. Pearl Soho is give, having this fantastic giveaway for finished objects for this. And so um, I'm hoping to have this done by October. I am on to now my um, first skein of my second color, which is the green turquoise. And so the original was eggshell blue. So that's what I'm working on that. And having fun. This is a great knitting um, in public or knitting down at the riverfront um, as I work across on this one. So this is the half and half. This is going to be a great shawl for traveling in for um, when we go to Iowa to see the kids, to wrap up around, or to um, sitting outside this um, fall, or um, when going on a little small little trip, I'll take this around to wrap around your feet or lay it over your, um, your legs. And I have actually, when I've been knitting on this down at the riverfront, when it's been just a couple, we had a couple of cool days, I sat down there and I actually had it draped over my, my legs um, to cover up my legs a little bit, so... This is the half and half. Having a lot of fun with this. And this is out of uh, Pearl Soho's Linen Quill. Um, really, the second time I've used it, I, try, I started a sweater with it, and it was not feeling it for the sweater. And now I have it in this, and I really, this I think this is just going to be scrumptious when, when I'm done. So that is part of another piece of the Summer of Shawls that I am uh, currently uh, knitting on. Now, um, also, something that I was knitting on, and I think I've changed my mind on this particular one for um, <clears throat> knitting right now, just right now. Um, 
the Gals on Frivolous and Frugal podcast and other podcasts as well, we're doing a Vertices, Vertices Unite. And I thought that I was going to do one of these for summer as well. And I even picked out my yarns for it. And now um, the uh, gals on um, Penny and Dawn have decided to do uh, a West Along uh, going forward. And I kind of think that I'm going to um, hold off on Vertices Unite myself because um, I had originally intentions of a certain of uh, four or five yarns that I had bought at Stitches Bid West a couple of years ago, and they were like a navy and a rose and a taupe, and that was what this was originally going to be. And then when I saw the that they were having the knit along, I thought that maybe I would do it for the knit along, and I would do it in the brights. And so I went to my stash. And I pulled out some brights for it. That really, um, probably two of these were designated for something else. And when I saw that they were going to do a West Along, and we were nearing for me the end of summer, um, and I really think these are something that I want to knit in the spring, so I have a nice springy one. And like I said, they really were destined for something else. And I think they're going, I'm going to go back and repurpose them next year for my original intention. Okay, so you get the gist of what's going on. And you had to throw in another color, which I, yeah, I was okay with that one. And I started knitting on it, and I, I love it. And it's going to be very, very bright. So I'm still on the fence about maybe leaving these as is on a, on a yarn for Vertices Unite and revisiting next year in the deep, dark winter, you know, when I need something bright. Or taking them back to their original intention and doing them in a wrap. So I'm torn. And for right now, because I have enough on my plate for knitting, I think I'm just going to kind of put them back into my Molly Klein bag <laughs> for summer and maybe just revisit, rethink that down the road because I do have in my um, whips upstairs a kit that I got last year for um, Stephen West Botanical Knit, uh, Botanical, Botanical? Yeah, Botanical um, Shawl. I can't remember the name. I'll show it next time because we're going to do a whole episode um, on summer of shawls and fall for shawls. So we'll talk about that all next time in the next couple. But anyway, so I'm thinking that I want to really bring that out and revisit that for, um, for now. So I'm going to put it aside and just kind of think about it and work on my other projects, my sweater and my christening shawl, which I've got to get back on as well. So those are kinds of things that I'm kind of looking at um, for Summer of Shawls going forward. Hashtag Summer of Shawls 2021. Please post your pictures on Instagram and um, in the Ravelry PJ Knits group under Summer of Shawls too as well. And, and tell us what you're knitting um, for shawls. Love to, I always love a good shawl pattern and I love to know what's up next for you. So, uh, books and bags. Well, in keeping with the uh, Stephen West theme, uh, Vertice, Vertices Unite is in the West Knits Best Knits book. I've had this for some time. Um, again, it's in there. There are several cool, cool shawls in here. Uh, and I, I bought it because, uh, because of that, Be partly because of Vertices Unite. Um, he has some interesting shawls in there, um, and I just liked a lot of them in here. A lot, some are, you know, they're, um, I think, there's that one, the doodler that I showed, and then this one is, oh, I knit also out of this dotted rays. That's what, that's what I knit out of it last year, out of La Bien Amie. 
I really bought it, I think, for that particular um, shawl. And then also Vertices Unite, like I said. And I bought that yarn, like, in Stitches Midwest four or five years ago. Um, but we'll talk about that as when I decide. And there's also Starburst. I think the thing I like about this book and his these patterns in here is they have potential for using up stash um, yarns, putting them together as what I did with Vertices Unite. Uh, one of those yarns was the the speckled was the the thought process of getting other ones and then I bought two others and then the um, the teal turquoisey one was a um, was a gift from a friend from knitting camp so um, West knits best knits this is uh, number one shawls so I love that book and so that one has some potential down the road for um, some knitting. Uh, bags. Last, uh, I could not participate in this, but Wool and Honey off of Instagram, that's where I'm getting all the stuff these days, did um, a, a Midsummer Celebration box for Hand Spun Hope. And in that package, um, you, I had some little balls of yarn to try out. Um, there was um, a, a bag yarn and a pattern, and this is the Wildflower Wrap from Wool and Honey. And this is, um, again, this is part of the Hand Spun Hope. Uh, this was a Hand Spun Hope yarn tasting. Um, it's our organic merino wool. Um, and uh, this is ethically sourced, hand pun, hand spun, hand pun, uh, or, or organically dyed. And it is part of Um, hand Spun Hope Tasting. Your purchase allows Hand Spun Hope to continue providing dignified employment to over 120 at-risk women in Rwanda, making a lasting impact on their lives and the lives of their children. And so this yarn came, and I chose it in the blue because that's my favorite. Um, and it's, it's, kind, it's soft. I'm really liking that. And that's a very good picture of the color, the colorway. So, got the yarn. Um, I got the little balls upstairs for the yarn tasting, the pattern, and it came with this bag. Isn't that cool? And you can put it around your belt loop, I do believe, and knit out of it. So this, I'm going to tell you, is going to be part of the Summer of Shawls giveaway. Um, I'm going to put these back in their box. And this is going to be part of, of the giveaway at the end of summer uh, for Summer of Shawls. So just want to put that out there. That is your books and bags for this episode. Okay. Um, mail call. I cannot tell you enough, guys. I cannot tell you. How many purchases I have made in the last 18 months off of Instagram. The nice thing about it, it has introduced me to different yarns and yarn company and, and places that I want to spend my money. So um, I am not apologizing for this. I am purely giving you information. But anyway, so um, recently, House of Yarn uh, in... I have to get this right because I always get it wrong. Nashville, Tennessee. Debbie and I did this on our way back from Florida a couple of years ago. Stopped in Nashville and went to the House of Yarn. And it's a cute yarn shop. It was fairly easy to get off to get to off the highway. Um, I didn't have a problem drive. We didn't have a problem driving there, and it was cute. Great yarns. I love that. But anyway, they posted this pattern and yarn, and of course, you'll know I had to order it. <laughs> This is for the Easy Peasy Poncho. The pattern came with the purchase of yarn from Noro. And there's two skeins. I am so excited to cast this on. But I won't for a moment or two. Look at this. I am super excited about this one. And I'm super excited about the poncho pattern. Look at that. Super, super excited. It's it's amazing how, how surprised... How excited I can get when I see something cool on Instagram and I just like nab it. 
Also, a podcast that I follow is Knit Style Yarns. Sharon and Rich, I watch their podcast, and she dyes yarn. And so she posted about not only a podcast, but on Instagram, a couple of yarns that she got. She uh, dyed, and this is Knit Style Yarns. This is a merino nylon sock in the fabulous fashion colorway. Is that not super cool? I do not have a clue as to what it's going to be, but look at that. I just had to have it. I think it's in keeping with what I, where I was going with this as well. <clears throat> and I also purchased, I have, it probably is going to come today after the mail, after we're done, but I purchased her first um, mini skein set. There's another set that I ordered for in the Bewitched colorways. This is Bewitched, Samantha, Witchcraft, and Dora, and Uncle Arthur, and it is a 92 yards each mini skeins. And when I get that, I will show them all together. Is that not super cool? And I'm going to do something fun with those. And so I'll have five more. And I know that the mailman's bringing them today. I just know that's what's in there. But I'll show them all together next time. And we'll talk about, hey, guys, I'm going to have 10 mini skeins. Give me some ideas in the comments below or on the Ravelry group. Let me know what I should knit with these. It has to be a shawl. I'll put maybe another colorway into it. But, hmm. It has possibilities. So these are from Knit Style Yarns. Um, watch her, watch their podcast and follow her on Instagram. So that is that. Um, mail call, just another one from my Fiber Universe um, shop. Um, I'm going to do a little spa coat for um, our new grandson out of Snuggly Bunny. And this is a pay for pattern from Sirdar. You can get it off of um, Ravelry. I'm going to call it a spa coat. Isn't that cool? That's the latest purchase from them. And I'm using it. This note. And I wanted to get away with from the strictly the blue, so I went with this gray. And this is going to be super fun. I made my other grandkids' scarves out of these, the, the um, lamb scarves last Christmas. So isn't that fun? So that is that. I guess that is all for mail call. <laughs> And that was for Knitting for Babes. Um, we have, again, I love the hashtags on Instagram. I love Instagram. Hashtag Knitting for Babes. And so those will show up there. That's the Knitting, ba knitting for Babes segment because um, I'm loving uh, Knitting for Babies these days as well for the new little grandson. Um, my one son yesterday was joking about, um, they were trying to take a picture of, of our new grandbaby in the cocoon and he was, you know, he wanted to play, she said. And my, my son said, yeah, I know, he, didn't, he just didn't really like your knits. And so I whispered to him while I was holding him, I'm like, baby boy, <laughs> you got a lot of knits coming this, this winter. And mom said in the background, oh, good. <laughs> so um, my son was, was just joking. <laughs> but um, I do love knitting for babes, and now we have an excuse right now. So, okay. Uh, getting nearing the end here. Um, First, before I lead into this, because I didn't want it to feel like I was leading into it because of anything. But to start with, I just want to give a shout out, and um, not that they watch, but I have several friends out there right now um, that are going through cancer. And it, the funny, no, the not funny thing, but the odd thing about this is they're all my age. And, and so I just want to say to those out there, my friends, who are going through cancer, um, we're here for you. We have positive thoughts that all three of you are going to make it through this. Um, uh, some of them, they're all in different stages of it. And um, you're going to make it because I have positive thoughts going your way. I have um, complete faith that you will be in remission soon and we will be back together and seeing you all at... Um, fiber functions, and um, at full force in your knitting as well. I, I just feel that, and I know that um, that is going to happen. So usually at the end I say knit on with confidence and hope, but I'm saying to you three people out there um, that are dealing with these health issues, knit on through confidence and hope, through all crisis. You can do it. I know you can. So um, I should have said that earlier on because now I'm going to lead into something else and this has nothing to do with my previous thoughts okay nothing 
This Thursday is Hospice Prayer Shawl Group, group and I have a finished blanket. Um, fire truck's going somewhere. This is the Garter Squish Blanket by Stephen West. Um, uh, this is a free pattern on Ravelry. I've done this in red, white, and blue before. It require mine is on a size 11 needle, and I've done through. Uh, I I have used Cascade Pacific throughout. I've used the cream Cascade Pacific throughout it, um, and then holding it and another strand of um, Cascade Pacific, I have knit all in the greens. And these were all leftovers from a baby Heavenly Heathers that I did earlier this, this year. So um, this is all finished. It has a super cool edge on it. Um, at the start and at the end, and I, and I just bound off on the end. So I have this all done. This one's all done for hospice this week. And again, on a size 11 needle. And what I discovered in finishing this off and I knew this before. What I discovered is my hands really don't like pushing and shoving it on a size 11. So that must be why I, I've been leaning towards fingering weight and lesser uh, yarns on my sweaters and that. But anyway, um, size 11 needle, really a super quick knit if you put your mind to it. And it's got all the greens in it. And again, so the greens, one skein of each of these yarns did a Heavenly Heather and um, a garter squish blanket. So I've got that to go for hospice this group this week. I have cast on another one. This is um, Raglan Shawl Recipe by Christine S. Christina S. Wilkins. It's a pattern I've had in my library forever. And um, she's feisty knitter. It's 2014. I may have purchased this. It may be a freebie. I don't know that. Raglan shawl recipe. She said that she, um, this made a few years ago, back in 2014, a friend was losing her father to cancer and she wanted to send her mother a warm hug over several hundred miles. Um, the goal was to create a shawl that would, would sit well on the shoulders and not slip off with every movement. Very, um, something I really like. So anyway, um, I decided to cast this one on for hospice and I am using um, Briar Rose yarn. This is 4th of July and I'm using the um, last couple of skeins that I've got on it and I need to go upstairs because I've got two different batches of it and so I need to rethink this and um, back out it and do some uh, helical knitting I think on it. This you can't helical knit because it's not in the round but I could uh, go back and forth so anyway that is um, Fourth of July from Briar Rose. Um, so, that is all that I have for you today. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, next couple of episodes, and I don't know how they're all going to pan out, but I want to talk strictly about Summer of Shawls and show you some shawl patterns. Um, I want to talk a little bit more maybe about transitional sweaters and... Um, uh, things that I'm thinking about for uh, for knitting. I have a couple ideas and I also want to talk about um, scrappy blankets because I want um, I have a new one that I want to cast on which would make what three ish and I'll show you my progress on others. So there's so much I want to I want to podcast about uh, coming up this fall and I'm looking and hoping that to do this a little bit more often. Uh, I say that every time but I have to I, I try to do it when I'm when it's quiet in the neighborhood. Uh, and also here, and that doesn't happen very much when when you're all retired and that's, but anyway, so thank you so very much for tuning in. I hope you're knitting some sweaters still this summer. You will will post this um, on um, Ravelry and um, Instagram. I also have a blog that I post on about my knitting and other things, www.pjknits.blogspot.com. And again, I am pjknits. On Instagram, I am Penny J on Ravelry, and our group is PJ Knits um, on uh, Ravelry as well. So, again, y'all have a nice, fun couple of weeks. Knit, knit some fun, um, 
And remember to knit on with confidence and hope through all crises. Thanks for tuning in.